jamming in the same thing. You are the writer, so you should know that. And so fundamentally speaking, this is what bad flow looks like. Okay, it just, it's repetitive. It, it's like, how are you doing? I hope you're having a nice day. So there is this particular, you know, a uh, bit of a, you know, email that was sent by Nigel Black. So it's a tradition here that I take a look at some of your own writing. Well, please don't write a prose like this, okay? I'm just going to get ahead and straight into it. Do not write prose like this. Nigel writes, the crow, this is her story, right? Yeah. The crow looked like a baby chick calling for its mother. Black and balling its shoulders into the arch of its wings and cawing and cawing. So, we have two sentences and we already have the foundation of how to write bad bros, okay? Or what makes up bad bros? Because you see, last time we reviewed a particular piece of writing from J.M. Arlen, right? And J.M. Arlen had bad editing. He did not by any means necessarily have bad prose. He just had bad editing. Well, Nigel here has both bad editing and bad prose. And this is a problem that a lot of people that are starting out in writing will usually fall into. And it is that they will essentially have unnecessary, unnecessary prose. But on top of that, they'll have inefficient prose. But on top of that, they'll have basically um, bad flow, bros that doesn't have good flow. And then finally, they'll have bad editing. So unnecessary bros, for instance, the crow looked like a baby chick, like a baby chick. Okay, the crow is a baby chick. So the crow looked like a, ba like a baby chick calling for its mother. Looked like because it already is. It doesn't look like it's a chick, you know, that's it's exactly, you know, so the chick was calling for its mother, comma, black and balling its shoulders into the arch of its wings and cawing. And that would be full stop. So that's the first problem, right? And it is an issue where essentially the prose is really, really unnecessary at, and it's inefficient, right? But then we run into a subsequent problem. And that problem is you have bad flow, okay? Bad flow. And this is the biggest thing. And I'm going to explain it to you. This bad flow will kill you. It kills every writer because most books I read that are officially published will have the flow to the prose be really, really bad. So what's flow? Flow is when your sentences are basically balanced out. Okay. Your sentences are balanced out. You have a small sentence followed by a long sentence with a medium sentence. And it looks like you're dancing with the length of your sentences. But on top of that, you have a lexical diversity, meaning you do not repeat the same words. Your sentences do not start the same way. You don't use the same constants or like um, vowels. OK, uh, so fundamentally, you will see that the biggest problem with, um, you know, uh, with this bros is essentially it has terrible flow. And I'll show you. So, for example, black and balling its shoulders into the arch of its wings and cawing and cawing. So here you have another problem. It, you know, it had hidden itself in a shade to be away from the sun and other pertinent eyes except mine. Then it would notice me. First of all, it would notice me or it noticed me because looked like, looked, okay, looked, you see that? It had hidden itself and then it noticed me it noticed me okay however this is a problem because you have it and it the two sentences will start more or less the same um, exactly so that's really a big issue you need to be able to approach different sentences from different angles right um, but then you go from a lot somewhat medium-sized sentence right? You have a medium sized sentence, another medium sized sentence, another medium sized sentence. You see, this is bad flow as well, because you're repeating the same flow. You have to diversify. Not only are you repeating the words, but you're repeating the flow of the words. Um, and on top of that, you are repeating the way you start your sentences. Exactly. There's no need to use then, because 
this is inefficient prose, uh, by the way. Uh, so calling, calling, then it's completely inefficient. It's unnecessary. Meaning you could have said it had hidden itself. Then it noticed me. Uh, it had hidden itself except for me. And then, uh, and it noticed me, right? So we know that these are subsequent actions, right? So you follow that with another issue, which is then it would notice me, comma, and it hid itself further away. It, I mean, you have, this is starting with it, this is starting with it, this is starting with it. You have to essentially diversify by knowing the gender of the chick. You are the writer, so you should know that. And so fundamentally speaking, this is what bad flow looks like. Okay? It just, it's repetitive. It, it's like, it's like, a, it's like that. You feel that? It had hidden itself. It noticed me. It hid itself further away. You know, this is basically jamming in the same thing. Okay? Jamming in the same thing. Um, which doesn't help because it continues. It might be still, right? Young, right? Um, and so that, and it was still young. I mean, really, really bad flow. Very, very bad flow. Um, and the sentence structures are not really diversified. Meaning, you have medium followed by medium followed by another medium, then followed by a long sentence. Very, very long sentence. And I mean, really, 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 really long sentence which looks like this. But when you have, what is, what is a long sentence? A long sentence exhausts the reader. A short sentence will help the reader rest and recover. Okay? And it will also pick up pace. A long sentence is something that you, that you mule over. You basically, it's like the trench warfare. You are dipped inside of it, you are swallowed by it, you are drowning in it. Imagine yourself in the middle of this sentence, you have, though I could still trace the outlines of its figure, its deepened color or lack of, and the gray scruff on its neck. It might be still young. And from what is known about crows, they usually come, but they usually stick to the appearance for years. No need for comment there. And it was still young. Yes, it was. So you see, you had dabbled inside the sentence, you know, swimming, trying to go, trying to basically, it's like a marathon, you know. You have to follow that up with a period of rest, meaning you have to help the reader rest, give them short sentences. What does she do? Cardinal sin. You have big sentence followed by a big sentence, which does not and it, it's another big sentence after another big sentence. I mean, it's a huge, huge sentence and another huge sentence. The audience by this point is really tired. Okay, they need a break. I need a break. <laughs> okay. And it had struggled away into the deeper dark, deeper dark and shade. I lost interest. Um, so even there is no short sentences here. There are just, you know, clauses. Clauses. Clauses are not short sentences. You have to give them a period, right? Jam it in there. Because that gives them a bit rest, right? So this paragraph, analyzing this paragraph, because this is as bad. This is as bad as bros can get. Now remember, this is as bad as it can get structurally. It is not necessarily bad in terms of descriptions, all right? And I like this. I like this. Why do I like it? Because um, the author has has a backbone okay she's not slimy okay she doesn't have a jelly backbone she's very 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 strong in the sense that she's taking a risk she's taking a risk authors like this people who start out writing prose like this and taking a lot of risk will usually fail a lot as you can see she is very she's failing here miserably and if they continue to keep taking risks like that it will pay off because they usually become much, much better, much more refined authors because they have made more mistakes. So this is good. Why is it good? It's good for the author. <laughs> it's not good for the reader <laughs> because the reader is bo both confused um, and, and tired and, you know, they're not engaged at all. They would like a break or something like that. Please put a short sentence in there, you know, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah, but for the author, it's good. 
for the author it's good because this is a terrible failure and a terrible failure is always good so the author should absolutely continue she should 100 percent keep being crazy because this is how you become a better writer you have to continue to take these crazy risks they pay off Four years of taking crazy risks, five years of taking crazy risks like this, trying to write difficult character arcs, when most people avoid them, is going to pay off. So, I hope you understand what makes bad prose. I could really delve into it, but then again, remember, the problems with this paragraph are the problems with the whole thing. And it is basically bad flow, bad, rep bad repetition, and an inefficient prose, the flow is bad because of repetitive structure, but at the same time, there is no balance in, there is just polarized structure. Meaning it's repetitive structure. You're repeating long sentences, medium sentences, nothing else, right? And you start your sentences mostly the same way. Uh, so I hope this helps, and I hope the author takes something from it. And please, 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 do not stop taking crazy risks like this. This is what good authors look like in the future. Because the product of this madness is a great author. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you took something from it. Have a nice day. Bye.